Okay, we are right now. Good evening, Hi. everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning from everywhere, whoever has joined us from all over the world. Uh, we're lucky enough that we have this virtual presentations or virtual uh, means of connecting with people. So all types of uh, greetings are due, actually. I'm Malini Visanji. I am someone who uh, have followed um, inspiring Indian women's group for a while. And uh, Rashmi here, who uh, sort of manages that group uh, perfectly well, um, sort of caught, you know, uh, recruited me to do this talk show. And I'm very happy, Rashmi. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And today we're here to talk about uh, uh, yoga. Uh, the talk is brought to you by Indian Inst Inspiring Indian Women which uh, started with a vision to reach out uh, and inspire women through each other and their success stories. And uh, it helps to promote Indian culture across the globe and uh, provides healthy platform for Indian women to motivate and support, support each other. Personally, I've been following IIW for a while now and been inspired by what they do. And for example, at the moment, the late they've, they have started uh, a campaign where they help uh, Indian women entrepreneurs to promote free their businesses uh, online on social media. And uh, it shows what Indian, what kind of Indian, uh, what kind of talent Indian women can bring in. Today, I have a privilege of bringing on this platform uh, Nabunita Das. Uh, who is a teaching assistant and a yoga instructor and a mother of two beautiful children. Welcome, Nabunita. And she's from West Bengal and has been in the UK since 12 years. Uh, Nabunita has been a teaching yoga in the UK uh, through virtual platforms since April 2020. She's a certified yoga instructor from a world-class yoga organization called PYT. PYPT UK Trust. Um, she can tell us what exactly PYPT means later on. Her yoga sessions aim to promote uh, physical um, health and mental well being through daily practice sessions from, for adults, weekly sessions for children, and various focused workshops as well that she organizes on a one to one basis or on a small group basis. Uh, I uh, According to Nobunita, yoga with, yoga, yoga with Smile on a Face, the name Smile with Yoga is an app name for her yoga group. So her group is called Smile with Yoga. So we're all going to keep smiling the whole evening today, everybody. Uh, her, she's got an Instagram account um, at smile underscore with underscore yoga and a Twitter account as well. Uh, at with SWY. She will remind it to us later on again to get, and she, she gives us on that health tips and updates about the latest workshops that Nabunita does. Um, I highly recommend you to have a look at it. I personally went through it, the Instagram account and it's very, very nicely done. And it's very inspiring. Well done, uh, Nabunita. Uh, Smile with Yoga has been working relentlessly as well with charities to donate to various charities like Breast Cancer, Charity UK, Children's Charity UK, various COVID crisis funds and project uh, YH, WHY in Delhi in India as well. Today, Nambunita is going to show us actually some of the poses, some of the breathing, some of the what she's going to what she actually practices and uh, what, what's the significance of the mantras of each poses, etc. And to help me on this session, I've got as well Rashmi. If so, please don't hesitate to put your questions on Facebook or on the chat and uh, we will try and answer your questions after the session. Uh, Namunita has finished her session. Namunita, to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malmiji and Rashmiji, for giving me this opportunity and thanks for the lovely introduction. Um, really grateful that I've been given this opportunity today. Uh, my focus today is although I practice all and teach all kinds of breathing exercises, which are pranayams, 
and various different things. Um, today, the focus of my session would be sun salutation or Surya Namaskar, which is kind of an overall, um, this is called kind of, if you can perform Surya Namaskar, of course, keeping in mind your health condition and current uh, body condition. If you are able to practice Surya Namaskar or sun salutation, you probably, do, even if you don't have time for anything else, you are covered. You can stay fit if you only, if, even if you can practice only Surya Namaskar. But of course, it has to be done with the right breathing technique. That is the key. And that is why I thought it is very important. Quite a lot of people, we lot of us learn from various sources, from Google, from YouTube. But sometimes we fail to understand, even though it is, you know, um, kind of mentioned even in those Google documents or in the YouTube, until unless someone really talks from the experience or who really teaches or who really practices, it kind of still leaves a gap. So I thought it will be very important to, you know, demonstrate in front of you. Also, suggest the scaled down version if someone cannot really perfectly perform exactly how it should be because we need to keep in ma our mind always our current health condition, current body condition. So let me first explain how um, Surya Namaskar came into picture because Surya Namaskar uh, was first um, introduced as a total overall workout. And it is designed such a way that each pose has its own counter pose immediately after that. Because when you perform any kind of stretches or asanas, it is very important you perform the counter pose immediately after that to balance your body. Um, and Surya Namaskar is perfectly designed that way. So if you have one pose, which is by forward bending, immediately after that, you will have another one which will be backward bending, okay? So it is kind of total overall workout. And the name Surya Namaskar came because um, Surya means sun. Um, our solar plexus or there is a chakra in along the line of our spine, we have got different energy centers. In yogic concept, we have different chakras or energy centers along the line of our spine and solar plexus or the, uh, you know, the main chakra, which is associated with it, it's called Manipur chakra. It is exactly at the center of our body. That means if that is in the correct position, your body has got the perfect balance of mind, perfect balance of your body. And it lies exactly behind our navel button, okay? Our belly button. So that is why when we uh, in initially it was introduced with the idea of performing it when the sun rises and when the sun rays fall on your body and you face the sun and you perform the sun salutation and the sun rays directly come and energize your body, okay? But we are in different countries, in different weather conditions. We Sometimes we don't even get to do it when sun rays are there, and especially when we are in a country, cold country, where sun rays, getting sun rays is really difficult until unless it is really summer days and we have real good sun. So even when sun is not there, even when you are not outside, you are still able to perform it. It is designed such a way that it brings different kinds of benefits, okay? Sometimes we are not having the sun rays to energize us, but whenever you get an opportunity, if you're able to perform, go out in the fresh air, take a mat and perform it when sun rays are falling on you, that's the best. But we don't need to be disheartened if we don't get sun rays when we are performing it. It still offers plethora of benefits, which you can, you know, um, enjoy. So there are 12 poses. Now, when I say 12 poses, that's the standard one, uh, which was introduced by uh, Shivananda Swamiji. Now, over a period of time, sun salutation has also evolved and there are so many various um, you know, uh, poses which have been introduced and so many other versions are also available. So the one that I show today, if you think, oh, that's not the one I do, but basic structure might be same. 
here and there variations will be there. So I will follow Sivananda Swami's 12 poses and 12 poses have got 12 asanas incorporated within it. And each asana go with a very good mantra because when the mantras go along with the poses, they really focus on that part of the body and then energizes that part of the body. And if you have seen in my poster, they actually go and focus on that particular energy center or chakra. So now it may be that through one pose, multiple chakras get activated, energized, and not only getting energized, getting rid of the tension, getting rid of the negativity, getting rid of the dead cells, getting balanced, and then revamped or replenished or rejuvenated, okay? That's why it's called overall workout because every single chakra gets addressed. Every single energy center get energized and replenished when we perform Surya Namaskar. Now, what if someone cannot perform Surya Namaskar because of age, because of some ailments? There are, there are scaled down versions. You do not need to perfectly go down. Now, say for example, if I say you have to go all the way down and touch your palms to the floor when we perform the pose number three, which is Pada Hasta Padasana, Pada Hastasana. It's known as um, both are fine. It's absolutely fine, especially when you have a heart condition, you are not supposed to bend down beyond the heart level when you are bending, okay? But you do as much as your body allows. Otherwise, if you are quite senior, in suppose you are very much restricted, I've got my chair, I'm going to show chair version as well. So, okay, the basic purpose of this is you do forward bending, backward bending so that you expand your lungs, expand your chest and you work your joints for you, okay? So there are always scale down versions. And when you say, even though you are not able to perfectly perform the poses, when you say the mantras, the mantras will go down your spine, down your um, body, and that itself will start energizing your chakras or energy centers, okay? So it's for everybody. Perfection is the best, but we don't settle down just because 100% is not there. 60%, 70%, 50% is also good enough when you do it with conviction, with belief, with positivity. That is very much important. And with big smile, yeah? So smile, positivity, conviction, belief, and with mantras, and with right breathing technique. Even when you are on chair, you are doing the Surya Namaskar, you are bending backwards, you are going to take a lot of deep, long breathing, expanding your chest. Okay, nothing is going to stop you to get the benefit out of it because you are doing it on chair, you are not standing and doing it. So both are good, okay? The main thing that you have to keep in mind, I'm going to perform with full uh, faith in it, with the correct pronunciation, if possible. It takes time to get the right pronunciation of the mantras, or if you can't, you can even put it on your, YouTube or put it on your whatever device you have got, that mantra when it goes in, when you're practicing, that itself starts to rejuvenate your whole system. Okay. And I will just go through one, the mantras, and then I'll perform along with the mantras. Okay. So first one is Om Mitraya Namaha. And that starts with the first pose, which is Pranamasan. Don't worry, I will demonstrate. The meaning of Om Mitraya Namaha is, it's we are, basically we are worshiping uh, sun. We consider in our, um, in yoga, sun is considered as God. So we are worshiping him. We are saying salutation to the friend, um, salutation to he who is the friend of all, okay? Now, next one is Om Ravaye Namaha. This one means salutation to He who shines all the time. Third one is Om Surya Namaha. That means salutation to the one who induces activity. Fourth one is Om Bhanave Namaha. 
That means salutations to the one who illuminates brightly, beautifully. Fifth one is Om Khagaye Namaha. That means the one who quickly moves through the sky, very swiftly, promptly. Okay. Next one is Om Pushne Namaha. Pushne means pushti. That means nourishment, who helps us to nourish. And that's why we say that the sun rays come and it kind of nourishes our body because it has got vitamin D, as we all know. Okay. Next, Om Hiranya Garbhaya Namaha, which means it is salutation to the golden cosmic self. Okay. He is, he is golden, he's bright and beautiful. Next one is Om Mari Chaya Namaha. That means salutation to the Lord of Dawn. He is the Lord of Dawn. He brings the dawn to us. Next one is salutation to the son of Aditi, which is Om Adityaya Namaha. And we are praying to even Aditi, Aditi who is mother of son, who is the cosmic mother. Next, Om Savitre Namaha. That means salutation to the one who brings life to us, to the creator. Next, Om Arkaya Namaha, salutation to the one who deserves praise. And last one is Om Bhaskaraya Namaha. That means salutation to the giver of wisdom and cosmic illumination again. So there are 12 mantras to go with 12 poses. Okay. Now let me start demonstrating the normal standard version. Okay. I'll just ask you one question. Sorry to know. You, you know, we, yeah, we no, also talked about fine. in the in the introduction about kids' yoga's workshop. So, do you do kids do the same kind of uh, Surya Namaskar as well, or is it different poses for the kids? The kids' one will be almost same, but um, there may be a bit of variations, like where kids will be asked to do with bit more perfection because they are a bit more flexible. But for adults, there will be scaled down versions if they cannot go down that far and they cannot really perform to the extent it is exactly expected. Yeah. So what you're going to show can also be used for kids. Um, yeah, I mean, I will try my best to show what is the almost close to perfection and then kids will be performing that. Yeah, but adults will be scaled down and I'll be showing on the chair as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So do let me know. Oh, I will make myself visible properly. Am I visible? Uh, yeah. Now it depends when you're going to do your Surya Namaskar. We'll see you now, but I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, when I go down, I probably have to bring it down a little bit. That's the space I could manage and <laughs> try to keep it diagonal as much as possible. That's much better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I might want to. Yeah, move that to. Yeah, that's it. So the first one, as I said. So first one, let's start with the breathing. Now, breathing in and out technique understanding is very much important, okay? So as we are bringing our hands forward, we are starting to breathe in. As we join the palms in the middle of the chest, we breathe out and join the palms together. This is called pranamasan or some people call it namaskara sthiti. And this is where we say om mitraya namaha. That means salutation to the one who is friendly to all, okay? Next one is we are starting to breathe in again, taking all the, both the hands all the way up, kind of arms touching by the ears and pushing the hip forward. And I'm going to bend backwards. And this is called Hasta Uttanasana. And here we say Om Ravaye Namaha. Okay. And next, you are starting to breathe out. So every time you bend backwards, you breathe in. Every time you are going to bend forward, you are going to breathe out. Now, starting to breathe out, but before that, making sure I'm going to go sidewise. 
making sure pushing the bottom behind first. You're going to bend from the hip, not keep bending our back. Okay, keeping the hands stretched forward. Yes, still breathing out, 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 until our palms touch the floor. Now kids will be definitely expected to go all the way, to go down. The palms almost at the floor. If they can, now they can be even more flexible. They can go all the way down. The palms will be completely on the floor. Head touching the knee. Okay. Now, for adults who have any heart problem or any, any other problem where they cannot go down that far because of any back problem, they can do this. As long as they bend and take the breath out. Take the air out, okay? Now, this is how it is expected exactly. Now, I'm just moving myself forward, but ideally, it should be starting at the beginning of the mat. For me, because I have to focus myself in the camera, I have to start in the end of the mat. Ideally, it should start in the beginning of the mat. Now, third pose. So, we did Om Ravai Namaha. We start with taking the right leg backwards. The foot and the palm should be exactly lined up on the floor in the same line. Okay, so my right leg has gone back, my left foot and my palms, same line, and my knee and my toe on the floor. I'm going to breathe out and look up. Now, if anyone has got vertigo problem or anything like that, they can't take their neck all the way back, they can look forward. Now, this is where Oh, we missed one mantra. When we bent forward, that was Surya and Ava. Sorry, I'll just go back a little bit so I say the mantra because I was explaining. So this was Om Ravai Namaha. We were bending from the hip. Breathe out. Go all the way down. It could be on the feet or by the side. Head down all the way up to the knee. Okay, this is Om Surya Namaha. Next, we're going to take the right leg all the way back straight, knee down to the floor. The left foot and the palms are in the same line. Here we are saying, Om Bhanave Namaha. Okay, that means the one salutation to one who brings brightness. And now we are going to take the left foot all the way back. Now, some people practice it like a plank and adults who cannot practice like plank, kids can practice like plank like this, where you have to breathe out. This was breathing, now breathe out. But some adults who cannot practice plank because of you know, age or back issue, they can do Parvatasana here itself. So two times they can do Parvatasana because Parvatasana comes in, uh, towards the end as well. Okay, so kids will be practicing plank here, whereas adults will be practicing Parvatasana here. So breathe out completely. And this is Om Kagaye Namaha. Next one will be bending your knees down. And then you are going to shuffle. So I'm going to move this way. Forward, bringing your chest chin down to the floor, palms by the side of your chest. This is called eight point tati, eight limb starting pose or Ashtanga Namaskara. And here we say Om Pushne Namaha. So we are sal saying salutation to the one who provides nourishment. Okay, here you are not supposed to do any breathing, breathe out, but adults who cannot struggle, uh, cannot, you know, stay without anything, they can do breathing, breathe out once not a problem. So that's the scaled down version. But ideally, he, here in this pose, no breathing, breathe out. So just holding the breath. Next, you are starting to breathe in. You're pushing your legs behind. You're tightening your bottom muscle. You're coming up in cobra pose, rolling your shoulder back, touching the elbow on your body. And you're trying maximum to do the back bend, backward bend. And here you are saying, Om Hiranyagarbhaya Namaha. And because we are doing backward bending, we are breathing in here. 
okay and you're starting to breathe out every pose has its own counter pose so we are going to go for counter pose here we are coming back to parvatasana again and we are head completely down in inward looking at the belly button here we are saying om mari jaya namaha okay next we are going to step forward using our right leg and that has to be exactly at in the same line with the palms okay again looking forward and the knee down and the toes down and looking up or forward depending on how your neck condition is because as an adult you have to be careful and listening to your body whatever your body allows you should only do that much when you force beyond your limit then you tend to hurt yourself okay after you develop certain amount of flexibility you can push yourself a little bit okay so here um mari chai nama om adityaya namaha that means salutation to the cosmic mother okay and now we are going to bring back the left leg from the behind and again back to the pada hastasana or hasta padasana here again head down so kids will be expected really to take their head all the way up to the knee okay and here we are saying om savitri namaha and now you are going back up again so i'm going to step back a little bit to show okay and going up when you are going up you are definitely breathing in and going back in the pada hastasana that means the backward bending pose okay this one so your hip is pushed forward and here you are saying om arkaya namaha and then you are starting to breathe out and back to namaste here you are saying om bhaskaraya namaha hey bhaskaraya namaha means again who is the giver of cosmic wisdom illumination okay so you can see that it's a different way of praising the sun for giving us the energy to replenish our body and through different poses we are actually activating and different joints sorry we are activating different joints so if i when we are doing pranamasan that means we are actually focusing on balance of the body and you at the moment you are that is the whole idea of joining the palms together you are sending actually positivity the positive vibes already starts going from your palms okay and when we are doing this so this is number one pose which is called pranamasan or namaskara stiti number two when you are stretching your arms pushing your hip forward so stretches your abdominal muscles okay and your it's kind of very much good for heart opener good heart opener as well and full lung capacity is utilized here okay now when you are pushing your hip and stretching this bit forward your upper body forward that means you are already working on your hip joints and your um, muscles here hamstring muscles are stretched right and you are going down Okay, so your arms, your shoulders, everything is now stretched, and it's an excellent arm and shoulder opener. Also, now when we go down, okay, so we have done this. When we are going into the, so I'm doing the, and Surya Namaskar is always recommended to perform in sets. That means when you work more on right side, the next time you should work on the left side. So last time I took my left. right leg back first so this time as i'm talking i'm still doing the left side so my left leg has gone back this time now this pose is called ashwa sanchalanasana and if you look at this pose because one of the legs is pushing on the tummy so it actually works a lot with of course your back your leg your calf muscles and also it is very good to address sciatica and also you know any indigestion constipation related problem that also it helps to you know address so this is um, called ashwa sanchalanasana okay so stretching neck on looking forward now when we do the plank or parvatasana 
depending on who can do what. It could be a plank or could be um, Parvatasana. And you can see that it's extremely useful for the spine because it really brings good blood flow in our spinal area and also brings very good balance of the spine and the whole body. Okay, So this is Parvatasana or Dandasana. Dandasana means whoever can do plank, that's Dandasana. Whoever can do this, that's Parvatasana. Okay. Now, a lot of people call it differently. Like some people can even call it like downward dog pose, which is Adha Mukha Suvasana. So I'm not going through all the versions today. Okay. Now, after this, when we go for the eight limb pose, which is Ashtanga Namaskara, this is really good in relieving anxiety. And, you know, and if you suffer from any kind of BP, it really it calms down your total nervous system. It's like eight parts, eight parts of your body is touching. So two feet where the toes are touching, the knees. Okay, so that's two, four, then your two palms, that's six, then your chest is seven and your chin is eight. So th that's why it is called eight limb down pose and extremely good for reducing anxiety. And of course, it's going to good, it's good, it strengthens your lower back and buttock area as well. Okay, after that, and this is supposed to be kumbhaka, that means without any breathing, breathe out, but as I said, for adults, especially after a certain age, we always give a scale down version. Okay? You can do a breathe in, breathe out once and see if you can hold the breath. Next, because you are going to do backward bending, you are of course going to breathe in. So pushing your legs, tightening your bottom, and then opening your shoulders and elbow touching your body. And then you can look forward again. Some people have got stiff necks, spondylitis. They cannot bend their neck backwards, especially vertigo people. You probably cannot bend your head backwards. In that case, you look straight. But try your best to get this pose right. Okay, that's Cobra pose or Bhujangasana. And Bhujangasana is an excellent heart opener as well. Of course, it tones the abdominal muscle as well. I mean, there are multiple benefits through the, all the asanas that you And of course, it is activating your solar plexus, which is the focus of this sun saltation. That means your navel area, your belly button, which is the second brain of your body. Okay. And then breathing out because we stretched backwards. We, we are breathing in. Now breathing out. Back to your mountain pose. And this is the counter pose. And head should be really tucked inside and trying your best in looking at your belly button. Now this one, that was Hiranyakasana, this is Marichaya Namaha, and this pose is called Parvatasana. Other one was Bhujangasana. Now we are repeating the poses. Sorry, this time it's left leg forward, so we are working more with the left, took it back, now we are bringing it forward. Again, the important thing is the foot and both the palms in the same line. The other leg is completely at the back. Now, if you are more flexible, you are a young person, you keep it stretched. If you cannot manage that, you bring the knee down. Okay? And again, looking straight or looking up. So there are a lot of scale down versions depending on how your body can manage. But don't give up because it is not 100%. Okay? As long as you are doing with the right mantra, right breathing technique, that's all it matters. And slowly you can go closer to perfection. Now this is Aswashantilanasana again. And we are going back to Padahastasana or Hastapadasana, however you want to call it. Now the ideal version is palms completely on the floor, your head going close to the knee. Okay. If not, you can do whatever your body can take. But kids are always encouraged to do the, uh, the actual pose, how it is expected. And then gently, as you rise up, again, keep your back straight. Without bending your back, don't compromise with your back. When you bend your back, then it, you are going to hurt yourself. So you wear in Padahastasana, then rise up, keeping your bottom pushed back, keeping your back straight. 
and gently bring yourself up. Then you will never hurt your back. Okay, and then again, you are breathing into the full capacity of the lung. And then back to Namaskara Siddhi. So I demonstrated right using the right leg, using the left leg. And Surya Namaskar is normally always recommended to perform in sets because then you kind of balanced both sides. Okay, now if it is okay, we have time. I can perform chair Surya Namaskara once because senior people can do chair, namas chair, chair Surya Namaskar because it's very hard for them to stand and do things. But again, even when you are on chair, you are going to do as much as your body can take. With heart condition, you probably cannot bend too much forward. So again, keeping in mind all the time, what your body can take. Chair version, focus is again, as I said, bending backwards, trying to use the full capacity of the lung, bending forward, maximum squeeze on the abdomen if possible, you know, so that, you know, that solar plexus is activated. So if I'm doing chair Surya Namaskar, I will join my palms and mantras, of course, Om Mitraya Namaha Om Ravaye And because chair has straight back, I have no problem in bending if I have any back issues. Om Ravaye Namaha Om Suryaya Namaha If I can't bend, more than this, because of heart problem, I will stop them, no issues. But if I can, I will go down. Om Surya Namaha. Starting with my right, so I've gone down to the right leg. Now I'm coming up. Om Bhanave Namaha. Okay. Om Khagaye Namaha. Okay. Om Marichaya. No, sorry, Hiranyagarbhaya Namaha. Om Marichaya Namaha. Om Abhityaya Namaha. Om Savitre Namaha. Om Arkaya Namaha. Om Bhaskaraya Namaha. It's pretty easy compared to what we do while standing, but this can offer a lot of benefits even when you perform on a chair. So this is the chair Surya Namaskar version. Okay, I think with this, I am pretty much done. So as okay. you can see, I just want to conclude. Sorry, did I interrupt? No, you go on, you go on. Yeah, so with that, I, I just want to conclude saying that please learn the mantras to go with each pose and breathing in when you are bending backwards, breathing out when you are bending forward, crouching, and only one pose which was recommended without any breathing in and out was the Ashtanga, that eight limbs down pose. But as I said, if adults with different difficulties cannot manage to hold breath in that pose, they can do breathe in, breathe out. And as you can see, it is a total body workout. So you don't even need to know which chakra is getting activated, but it was my responsibility to you know, make you understand when you're opening your chest, you're really bending backwards, you are really activating your heart chakra. You are actually stretching you are actually, actually activating your solar plexus or your Manipur chakra. 
and when you are you know bending forward you are actually working on root chakra that means the bottom of your um, spine the very first chakra the muladhara chakra then the sacral chakra and solar plexus not only give you the physical fitness it brings the mental balance the calmness you know the anxiety level comes down and but only one thing you have to make sure is keeping in mind if you are pregnant you should not be practicing because the poses are quite you know tricky when you are a pregnant and if you as i said if you have vertigo problem try not to bend backwards that might make you feel dizzy or if you have any lower back problem any back issue always listen to the body do it only as much as your body allows and everything has to be done gently slowly now surya namaskar can be taken in the faster mode if you want to make it like a cardiac cardio okay it can be done but again you should be fit and uh, your body condition should be suitable to do it but it can be taken in the cardio mode as well it is such a good exercise simple one you don't need very a big space lot of equipments or anything so this one exercise if you practice that itself will keep you fit fine be it allergy be it indigestion be it constipation you know what not keeping your back you know strong and fit it can cater to all okay um one other thing i wanted to say is after performing surya namaskar so i'm going to put my chair away you should not immediately go down on the floor and do shavasan just in case you tend to do that so after you have done surya namaskar you should do standing breathing breathe out just bring your attention to your own breathing breathe out so you can have your hands by the side of your hips and just do some calm breathing breathe out and all the breathing breathe out that we do in surya namaskar it should not be with open mouth through both the nostrils all the time like this because i was talking i don't know if you could hear my breathing breathe out much but it should be something like this so when i'm performing calmly you probably can hear only breathing breathe out let me just do once if that's okay where you can only hear the breathing breathe out which is very important okay Did go out a little bit off the screen, but I hope you could hear the breathing breathe out very prominently. That's what I wanted to demonstrate. Okay, you could say the mantras in your head, or you can keep it playing on some device that you have, which will start replenishing your mind and body. It will start calming. Okay. Okay, um, Nabanita, thank you very much. Uh, very thorough demonstration you've given us over there. And uh, I think you've given us quite a few details about what uh, the mantras are all about and et cetera, which is quite interesting. Just one question I came in my mind is the Surya Namaskar or the sitting Surya Namaskar, should it be done at a certain time of the day? Or do you recommend that to be done in the evening, in the mornings or any time of the day? That's one question that I have. Um, as I said in the beginning, it is ideally done in open air when the sun rays are falling on your body but uh, depending on different country different time ideally before um, you know first thing in the morning if you can manage 
okay. it has to be done in empty stomach so be okay. it in the morning or be it in the evening it is it is best performed when you are in empty stomach as you can see the forward bending ones when you're taking your breath out you can really perform it nicely if you have empty stomach and it also activates all the chakras and your intestines your pancreas everything so it's good and um, kind of good for your digestion as well so if you can perform maybe ideally i normally do evening five to six or sometimes okay. six to seven because i do my session six to seven so that and really uh and you you how many you said it should be done in sets so would you do a set of 6 or a set of 8 or an odd number or an even number what would you do it it has to be even number because as you okay. see if you left have done right. right side you do the left side doesn't matter which side you start but it has to be balanced on the other side as well okay for a beginner so, how many sets would you recommend as a beginner who has never done any yoga you have to start with two each and every pose you have to really feel nicely okay. then increase it to four six like that and for kids how many sets would you recommend if it's done for the kids once they have learned the steps properly 10 to 12 so okay. um, as you see we can say only in even numbers because they have to do on both sides um we'll talk more about your uh, sessions do you give group sessions do you how, how do you sort of organize yourself in terms of coaching or teaching yoga? Um, if you could give more details to our audience, maybe if they want to, you know, contact you and if you could give us more details about that. Yeah, I do adult session during the school holiday, um, school days, the term time, as I live in UK, I work in school. So um, I give normally the evening session, evening 6 to 7 p.m. for adults. For kids, because they are in busy in different activities, it's only uh, once in a week, which is on Sundays. Yeah. And so depending on summer, normally we tend to do it in the mornings, but in winter we are kind of, sometimes depending on the parents' preference, we have done in the past morning, eight to nine or afternoon, four to, but for this winter season right now from January, we'll be doing afternoon, four to 5 p.m. So that, you know, they are kind of, they have done good exercise before having their dinner and they can get good sleep because yoga, when they practice, especially Surya Namaskar, they help to get good sleep, especially kid with, kids with anxiety and autism. Surya Namaskar is really good one to calm their mind, make them really, you know, get the good sleep also. All right. Um, we'll start winding up on Navaita. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Rashmi to... Uh... See if we have any questions from anyone. Rashmi, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Malini. And uh, yes, I was trying to learn and emulate uh, Navanita. I really am, uh, you know, we need a very flexible body, the way she could do it, you know, the chakrasana and all. Um, amazing, Navanita. And uh, I think we need to start very young too, so that at one point of time, our body remains flexible you know otherwise if we start late do you think we can still do those asanas is it difficult uh, yeah as i said um, adults you know to look for perfection do as much as you can because um it's not that you don't get any benefit if you don't do um exactly the perfect version but the key is you listen to your body and you do the right breathing technique breathing when you are bending backwards even if you are not bending backwards that much even if you are doing a little bit you are still doing with proper deep long breathing that is the key and that's why i showed the chair version as well because if you see in the chair version you don't really need to do as much as when you do standing one but if you are really up for the standing one you start with as much as your body allows but when you do with right breathing in and breathing out even when your bending is not as much as it is expected you will still reap some benefits out of it and slowly you will see because of that deep long breathing breathe out your body is starting to cooperate and you will be doing better so yes no it's yeah, not that so yes navanita the uh, i believe you're starting some kids workshop can you just quickly give us details of the kids kids work workshop when is it starting and how can parents connect with you and contact you 
No, right now uh, I offer a workshop only during the half term or um, Easter or Christmas holiday like this. Um, otherwise, it's only uh, regular weekend sessions, which is 4 to 5 p.m. on Sundays. But we'll have some workshop in February half term. That time so it, it is like a six days workshop. Uh, so it's all virtual. I think you're teaching everybody virtually. Yeah, okay. as of now, still because the pandemic is so much around us. Yeah, so fantastic, uh, Navanita. It was wonderful watching you uh, perform and uh, show us some yoga techniques and uh, uh, enlighten us about uh, the way we should do the right way. It really purifies mind, body, and soul. I could feel it when you were saying those uh, Om Namo, and you know, it, it really felt very nice and uh, uh, it was like peace of mind. Uh, Thank you so much, Malini, for being the host and uh, fantastic hosting. And we're so lucky that we have you on board uh, and uh, hope to see you more. Thank you very much, Malini. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Navanita and Malini. Thank this you, is inspiring Malini. Thank you, yeah, thank you. This is Inspiring Indian Women, and we have beautiful Inspiring Indian Women right in front of us. So, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is New Year. So, we all want you all to enjoy it. a very happy New Year, and 2022 will hope, hopefully be better, much better, because 21 was horrible, horrendous. I don't know which word to say. It, it somehow, we just wanted to go. Yeah. And uh, so, we are starting our 20. 2022 with very fantastic show on uh, 8th of January and 9th of January because we want to connect with the roots and we're bringing to you um, two couples one couple who is doing great work with bamboo and uh, he they are training having workshops for with bamboo bamboo workshops bamboo creativity and uh, trying to bring employment to the rural women they are Minakshi Walke and her husband. So that will be on 8th of January, 7 p.m. India time. And we have on the 9th, the couple, the couple who is uh, uh, struggling, I would say struggling to get employability to the differently abled in Bihar Patna, T24 Foundation, Disability Foundation. And we are trying to support them and help them. And let's talk with them how they are managing and uh, trying to bring happiness to some people who are unable to get equal rights and treated equally. So that's our show. We begin 2022 with the two shows. Meanwhile, have a very, very happy new year. Take care. Goodbye from Inspiring Indian Women from Malini and Navanita Das. Bye bye. Have a bye. happy new year, everyone. Bye bye. Happy new year, yeah, everyone. New year. Bye. 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 Live happy, live healthy. Yes. <laughs>